Hi there, YouTube friends. It is Monday, so we are back for another video. But first, if we have not been introduced yet, my name is Danielle and I do videos on personal growth and self-development as well as some story time videos. So if you like that, please stick around for more. So in the past week, a few different things have kind of happened, specifically with work, that has got me thinking on a specific topic, which is boundaries. The importance of boundaries, why we should have them, why they're important for us as adults. I made a couple of videos in the recent past here that have been about different things that have made me feel like an adult, such as setting effective goals, paying off my debt, removing myself from a toxic pyramid scheme. But I would have to say that establishing boundaries and honoring those boundaries has been the most beneficial towards my happiness, my rest, as well as my mental health uh, in regards to things that you can do as an adult. So what are things that we can set boundaries for? We can set boundaries for our personal space, our sexuality, emotions and thoughts, stuff and possessions, time and energy, and also culture, religion, and ethics. And I think it's really common to fall into the mindset that boundaries create separation from ourselves and others, when in fact it can actually uh, improve our relationships with others and help us grow and develop a stronger bond with them. And I'm gonna talk about how that can happen. So the first thing I really wanna talk about is what boundaries are actually for. So there's a few things that boundaries uh, benefit us in. The first thing is that it helps us improve our relationships and our self-esteem. In a relationship, whether it is romantic or friendship, family, having boundaries can help us from feeling unsafe, which in turn can improve those relationships and then they can develop and become deeper and more, uh, more vulnerable. So the way that I really like to think about boundaries is kind of like a playground at a school. Some of them have fences around the edges and some don't. And what's really interesting is that there has actually been a few studies on these two different types of playgrounds for children and how the children behave within them. So for instance, the playgrounds that don't have a fence around the edge, they found that the children stick very close to the school or to the teacher and don't really venture out very far into the rest of the schoolyard. Whereas when you put fences up, they feel safe enough to travel and explore all the way up to the fence you know, without feeling like they're going to wander out into traffic or that something is going to hurt them. So in that way, boundaries can improve our relationship because it creates a playground in which we can play and grow and build on our relationship. And in regards to building self-esteem, when you set boundaries for yourself and you honor those boundaries, it feels like you're actually taking care of yourself. It is a form of self-care. You're preserving time, space um, for yourself that other people cannot infringe on. Another thing about boundaries is that they can be flexible. They can change over time. It can also change from day to day. Like today, I feel comfortable to do this. Today, I'm not feeling like I can do that right now. So I need to bring my boundaries in a little bit closer. And the last thing I wanna say specifically about what boundaries are is that they give us space to grow and be vulnerable. And this kind of ties into the first point as well. So in life, we deal with very complex emotions and situations. Within relationships, when we set boundaries and then eventually break them down and create new boundaries, we are showing our vulnerability. And something that happens very often is that when you show vulnerability to someone else, they are more likely to show vulnerability to you. So how do we set boundaries effectively and how do we know what our boundaries are? So there's a couple of different ways that you can set your boundaries. The first thing is to examine what are your rights. So some of these can be super super basic human rights, such as having the right to say no without feeling guilty, having a right to be treated with respect, uh, having a right to make your needs as important as others. Another way of setting goals is to go by your gut. And in these situations, you need to have just a bit, little bit more self-reflection of how you are having a physical or personal mental reaction to things that are either offered to you or done around you. Uh, an example I saw online while I was doing a bit of research for this is uh, maybe you clench your fists when your roommate borrows your new coat. If you are paying 
paying attention to your body reactions and what makes you uncomfortable. From that, you'll be able to determine, okay, maybe I need to set a little bit of a boundary or talk it out with this person. And another way to set your boundaries is to look at what your values are. And your values are reflected maybe in your philosophy, in your religion, your culture, your ethics. Any of those things can influence what your boundaries are. Okay, so so far we've talked about what boundaries are and how they are important, and also how to recognize when we need to set boundaries. So the third section that we have here is how to set those boundaries effectively. And the first thing is to be assertive. That is not to say be aggressive. A way that I've had it described to me is that you can be firm but kind to others. Another way to set boundaries is to just say no. It is a little known fact that no is a complete sentence. You don't have to give explanations afterwards. If someone asks you at work, hey, can you cover my shift? You are allowed to just say no without giving any explanation of why. And another tip for setting boundaries is to seek assistance when necessary. Defining and asserting your boundaries with a loved one, especially a loved one who experiences uh, mental illness or depression, anxiety, or some sort of history of trauma can be really difficult. There's no shame at all in seeking out a mental health practitioner to aid you in the process of setting boundaries. So those are the main things I wanted to talk about with boundaries today. I think it's really important to remember that boundaries are here to help us. They're there to help you feel like you're being respected, whether it's your time, your space, your possessions, but it's also there to build our relationships in a healthy way. But that's that's all I have to say on the matter. Uh, if this video helped you at all in setting boundaries or if you had trouble setting boundaries in the past, like I have, please let me know in the comments below. And I'd really love to chat about it with you because this sort of thing really fascinates me. But as always, if you liked this video or took some value from it, please click that like button. And if you feel like you wanna stick around for more videos like this, self-improvement, uh, personal growth, storytelling, please click that subscribe button and maybe think about clicking that bell icon so you never miss a Monday upload. But until next time, friends, be good out there. Bye. Thank you.